All right, welcome back to Niantic Bay Yacht Club, hosting host venue of the 2019 Women's Sunfish North American Championships. And we're just coming back now. We've gotten three races in this morning. Uh, we had everything from Gustin 14 to Gustin 0. Um, I definitely say 0 a few times there. But. <laughs> yeah, we had one point where there was no wind on the course, but there was wind elsewhere. So... <laughs> Uh, right now we have the sea breeze just now filling in. There's going to be some good racing this afternoon for competitors. Um, and we'll, this, they're starting the sequence shortly. And we'll get some, the drone back up in the air. And there it is, that's five minutes. Uh, the, uh, the sunfish class flag is up. So we're, we're now in sequence. And just to remind you, can we get a course up? And just to remind you, we've been doing uh, windward lure courses, and I'll and Pete is going to get that up for you right now. Uh, do we know if it's B? I assume it's the same one. John, do you know the course? A or B? That, and we're within four minutes of the start here. So once again, after the lull in the breeze, competitors are going to be looking at their sails. They're going to be figuring out how to change their rigging to best suit the conditions. They'll be looking at the race course with this new southerly breeze. This was something that was a possibility with the sun out today that uh, could warm yeah. the air and you could get a sea breeze filling in in the afternoon. And and I'm sure that they, uh, and I'm sure that they're pretty happy that they're not yeah. drifting anymore. Oh, exactly. At least to have a Nothing's little bit of a sea that. breeze and some some good wind to get around the course. What you did do though is let everybody catch their breath, get something to eat, get re rehydrated, be ready to go. So you know everybody should be going at it strong. And we'll get the course up for you now after we figured it out. Talk to the race committee, know what they're doing. And of course B, so we're doing, a, a, so the, 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 race, uh, the racers are gonna start between the race committee and the pin boat, tack all the way upwind to mark one. They'll go around mark one and one A, sail all the way downwind, go between the lure gate, two P and two S. They'll round the lure gate, go all the way back upwind, round, Go down to the lure gate 2S and they will finish after rounding 2S. Okay? Um, and we're now about 2.15 to start. Can we get this on a drone start? There we go. This start, we're going to catch you with uh, with some nice drone footage. We'll see what's happening here. Please don't forget you can share, comment, share this link, please. You know, let us know if you have any questions, comments, cheer on competitors, whatever. As you can see here, competitors are starting to line up. We're, we're within one minute of the start. And you 
see we'll get a nice line, a, a drone shot above the line. I like that. I like that. You can really see here, this is the pin boat, and, and if you draw a line between the pin boat and the, the other boat all the way across the line, the, the race committee boat, that's the line they're starting between. We're coming down on last few seconds, seconds here before the start. 71, that's Marguerite Kohler coming in on a hot port tack, and she's getting right off the line, perfect start, and that's the start. Looks like Marguerite with the port tack, and she's going to have to tack 14, uh, 16, Jennifer Lane on starboard, forcing Marguerite to tack. Marguerite, a little bit of a slow tack there, and now she's going to get, she's going to get covered by uh, Jennifer Lane. It looks like she's just able to get forward enough so that she can still get some clear air. You can see 4729 right there in front. She's doing well. That's Faye Flam. She had a good last race. 14 Mary, Mary Charles, Charles working she's hard. Doing well. And you can see there's there's Lindsay who won the last race, 4704, right in the middle of the line, out in front, getting clear air. A lot of boats holding on to starboard tack for now. And you see in the background we have black uh, black point. I'm off mute.
work to keep that boat flat. And the flatter the boat in these conditions, the more wind that they can capture, the more wind they can use to keep the boat going forward fast. And the better sailors are going to be the ones that keep the boat flatter. Some of the top competitors in this kind of breeze are going to be people like Gail House, who love the big breeze. We're coming up to the windward mark here. It looks like 71 Marguerite is going to be well in front. <clears throat> All right, how's that sound? That is much better. Okay, great. How's that for volume level? Volume is fine. You hear everything. All right, we have Marguerite Kohler rounding the mark, <clears throat> followed closely by Lee Parks. That right side seems to have yeah, really paid, paid off, off for her. 4820. 4820, that's Sonia Dean. Sonia, yeah. Sonia having a good regatta so far. 80361, that is Gretchen. Gretchen She's Seymour. doing all right, too. 53100, that's Ursula Olson. She's been up there. And 5729 and 16. 16 is Jennifer Lane Jennifer from Coast Guard Lane. Academy. She's sitting in. Uh, Seventh place right now in the regatta. So hoping for some good finishes. And there's eight one three three three. That's Liza. That's Tara. Wait, one three 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 is Tara. Okay. Eight one three 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 is okay. Tara. Yeah, She's yeah. having a great race. And followed by you know four eight three zero is uh, Nancy Jaywork and Lindsay Stockwell wrote close behind. Seven eight two seven five. And four eight six zero is Marta Kloos. A Yukon Sailor are also some good finishes of women. She's hoping to do really well this regatta. Someone overstood the mark by a good amount. <laughs> Who is it? 75016. Oh, yeah, they're yeah, way on the outside. Oh, that's Kat. That's Kat uh, St Stavola. Giuliano. Or Giuliano now. As he, you know, <laughs> her wedding was last weekend, so go cat, go cat. <laughs> <laughs> and there's Bernadette just rounding the mark. We have quite a few uh, girls now around the mark, and uh, they can start heading downwind. We got basically a windward lured course with a lured gate. And, and I like that the, the fleet is pretty held together. It's not uh, it's not really scattered. I mean, there's still obviously a front and a back, but uh, there's a pretty good front pack. Who's in 4872? That's Kimmy. Kimmy oh. Jackman. What's the name of the boat? A Bantam Mola Lake. Mola. <laughs> They're sailing the SS Mola Mola. There's Melissa the right The Ocean here. Sunfish. Followed Melissa closely. Conway. Oh, she's on Wave Hopper. The Wave Hopper. Yeah. Yeah, we're actually seeing a lot of boats uh, that have overstood the windward mark. So I would say definitely we're, they're in that east to west current still. There's 4355, five, Mary Jane Krasik. Now, well, I noticed um, one boat had sail 19, they had a wreck sail. Uh, what are the advantages and disadvantages for sailing with a wreck sail on a day like today? So, uh, a wreck sail, uh, the, the biggest one that you'll notice right away is that a wreck sail doesn't have a window. Right. So, uh, you can see here on these white sails, they have 81443, has a nice big window, clear plastic strip on the sail that the skipper can look through to make sure there's no other boats coming, can look down the course, can look around, make decisions, and it's a tremendous help. 
And if you're in a rec sale, you're not going to have that window. Yeah, you're going to have to get down low to get it, see underneath it, and uh, especially make sure you don't for hit taller anything. people. Oh it's, yeah, you got to be hiked way out to uh, to be able to see under that thing. And maybe with the wind today, you're hiking out, going up you wind, might, but yeah, it could still be tough, difficult to see around, you know, without that window. All right, well, and how about this boat I'm looking at, 88552. I noticed the mast is sticking up a little That's bit more than Rosemary. So, um, Rosemary is running a gens rig today. Um, that's where we lower the center of effort on the mast so that it, it makes it a little bit easier to keep the boat flat in heavy wind. And you can see the boat next to her, 81443, uh, Susan, uh, Susan also is running a gens rig, but not quite as much of a change. Right. Hers is a little bit closer to a full rig sail, and uh, whereas Rosemary has a big gens, she must maybe she's worried about the wind today. It was heavy when they launched. She wants to spill a lot of air off that top, and just let it bend and pour off to keep it, the boat stable. Yeah, she wants to make sure that she's not going to be overpowered by the wind. And with the sea breeze filling in, it looks like there's a, a, a lot more chop, a lot more wind, so it could be uh, harder to keep that bow flat. And with the southerly wind, uh, you know, it's coming from offshore, so, I mean, it's coming from on, it, it's, it's coming, coming from, onshore. <laughs> it's, it's an onshore breeze, and uh, so we'll see a little bit more chop building as the racing goes on, as the wind brings in the waves. Um, and as we said, the tide is going to be coming in all day. So uh, thank you, Jen Lee, for asking about the tide. Uh, the tide now especially is going to be starting to build up to full speed. And uh, with the high tide around 430, the tide's going to be coming in all day. So when we saw up at that last windward mark, uh, a bunch of sailors overstanding the mark, they sailed too far before they tried to tack across to the windward mark. Maybe the tide was pulling them out and, and pulling them past the mark. And here you see a lot of the sailors that's just starting to reach the leeward mark. They're, they're choosing which gate to go around and they're turning around to go back upwind for the upwind leg. Yeah, a lot of decisions going into that, which, which, uh, which mark to go around, whether you go with the less crowd so you have free air, whether you go to the favored side, a lot of decisions. And, and we're seeing a little bit of an even split. Yeah, I would say so too. Uh, in terms of choice there. Yeah. So we're seeing some boats go left, some boats go right. And uh, as they try to figure out this new course that's just set for this race, um, we'll, we'll see what they decide. You know, uh, when, when the skippers figure out what the best side is, you'll, you'll tend to see a lot more going right. to that side. And, and that could be for multiple reasons. It could be for current, it could be for the wind. Maybe there's more wind on one side, maybe they're getting lifted more on one side. But right now you're seeing a lot, a lot go to each side pretty evenly. Still looks like Marguerite's uh, holding on tight. Yeah, Marguerite had a pretty decent lead, so. Yeah. In this breeze, it can be hard to catch her unless someone really calls the uh, uh, a nice uh, right. puff off on the side or the, gets, gets gets in the, the right, right current or, or something. the right shift, whatever. If there is, I don't know if have we seen much shifts. I guess uh, we'll have to see. Well, we with see the sea any. breeze, it's probably a little bit more Solid, steady. Right. So uh, it's a little bit different sailing than we saw this morning with the offshore breeze this morning. Yeah, I mean, as we said before, it's been a, about a 180 degree shift since this morning. <laughs> exactly. We had a northerly to start out the day, then it went east, and now it's all the way south. It's, it's switched to you.
interesting to see how this mouse mark rounding goes. I think Marguerite went far, far left, and uh, she might not have been able to hold it. We'll see. So you think uh, it looks like course right was the best way to go. Right, let's see who's We had a lead change. Looks like we had a lead change. Marguerite's now in second. We're back. So Marguerite managed to uh, drop down to second place. Did it, was it Lee Parks that no, got her? No. Or? It's, uh, so Lee Parks had a fantastic I think it might be first Sonia. leg. And Sonia was in third, so yeah. she would have been in a good position to make a move and pass uh, Marguerite. So this is a, a lot of these leaders now are going downwind. They're going to be going to the reach mark. Uh, no, sorry, they're going downwind. They're going to the gate. They're going around uh, the gate mark and then to the finish line. Now, one note there: you only have to honor the gate mark uh, that's to your port as you're coming down. Correct. So right. you can round both Correct. of them or just that one. And um, in the interview we had earlier with the PRO, he mentioned that uh, he likes to do this um, so that he can make sure he sees the sail numbers as they finish. And this is something he's picked up actually from the foiling boats that he's more familiar with. So with the foiling boats, it can be very difficult to catch those uh, sail numbers if they're coming dead down or in other angles of sail. Uh, and in this case, it helps them out with the sunfish too as they reach across the, uh, the finish line. He's got a clear view. Is that Jennifer Lane in first place now? Is it number 16? That's Jennifer Lane. Is she out in front? It looks like that could be the case. I don't know. Maybe. She was know. she was back in like eighth place after the first leg. So if she managed to pass in all those boats, come out in first uh, for this downwind, that would be a big change. Now, this is her first time in Sunfish. Um, Uh, we don't have. Uh, so, anyway, so we'll see what happens when they get down to the lured mark. Um, she's a little bit further to the, to the left, which means that she isn't going to get mark room around the lured mark. But if she can come out clear ahead, then it's not going to matter. You can see the, the, the sailors lift their centerboard downwind so they reduce, uh, they reduce drag on the boat so they can really k get every little bit of extra speed they can because it adds up over the course of a mile or two miles as these courses are set. Now, Will, many of the boats I'm used to sailing, they have a shroud or something like that so you can't let your sail out past a certain point. Sunfish doesn't have that restricting it. Uh, how does that play into your downwind? So, uh, when you let your sail out past 90 degrees, 
We call that sailing by the lee. And when you sail by the lee, uh, it looks like Jennifer's going to be outside here. So she's going to settle into second place. And four, four, six, four, eight, two, oh, that's Sonia Dean is going to be leading the charge to the finish line. And you can see a couple boats are heading up to try to get clear air. And a couple of the boats uh, stayed low. And maybe that is going to bite them. Sonia stayed really low. Hmm. It's interesting. Yeah. Are they trying to... It... Yeah, they just gave up. They, yeah, they, they it looks like up. they just gave up finishes. Maybe they didn't know the course. Maybe Sonia didn't know the course or what. But those two boats that stayed high went to the finish line yeah, are going to just... pass Sonia and Jennifer. I don't know what happened. Did they not know the course? Did they not realize that... Uh, the higher part of the course was the, the better right. way, that last leg. Usually you don't see anyone passing anyone that last leg. No, it's, it's a rarity. That's like a yeah. drag race. It's exactly. it's it lines people up, and first one to the mark wins. But that's really surprising. They, they, Sonia lost a lot of boats there, and Jennifer lost a, at least two boats. I'd agree. So... Here we go, 4729, that's Faye Flam coming in on the finish. And followed by uh, Gail Hausler, who, uh, despite loving this win, didn't have a great race for her compared to the first couple races. And right behind her is Lindsay, the winner of race three. So we'll see how these uh, results shake up the standings. You can see, once they round this mark, the orange mark in our view, it's usually just a parade straight, to the finish. Yeah, you just go shot. straight to the finish. And for Sonia, top competitor, experienced in big fleets like this, to, to make a mistake like that, going to the wrong part of the line or going to the wrong finish line, that she's gotta be, gotta be uh, fr very frustrated with herself after making a mistake like that. Winning mm -hmm. the race, dropping from first to third. Especially because she st she held that inside around the mark running. So right. She, she, she had. Yeah, she had it right there. Yeah. I mean, another thing you have to think about there is don't oversheat when you when you get around that mark. It's not don't pull it tight. Keep yourself keep yourself loose for speed. And yeah. Maybe maybe she tightened up. I don't know. Yeah. But here you can see they round the mark and they almost go once, almost single file all the way to the finish line. Right, right. Now is that Connie uh, Miller right there maybe perhaps coming in there? Oh yeah, Wait. that's with Connie's new sail I believe. What's the number? Seven zero six seven. Seven zero. Okay. Oh, we're getting real blurry. That's Cottie Miller finishing or finished, and uh, you know, a bunch more boats. Here comes Mary Charles coming into the finish. And That's Joan Butler, 88. No, that's permanent. I don't have any. And I think we have no problems finishing within 15 minutes of this uh, this race. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, they had with the dead wind. Race three ended with a lot of time limit expired. A lot of sailors weren't able to finish within the time limit. But here, it shouldn't be much of an yeah. issue. 
We might have a couple, but. It was a quick race. They're actually going to extend the race course after uh, after the, all the finishers uh, round. And, uh, you know, we'll get right into another race. So here comes 4331. That's Kathleen from Team Florida. Kathleen Mears from Weekapog. Still. Oh, you're right. Free, Looks like we have two boats still going downwind, but beyond that. It's like three out. downwind then, from this view. Like two red, white, and blue sails. Four, eight, seven, five just finished. That's Katie. Well, we're going to go to an on the water view. That's Katie Garrison, yep, from Sebago. Hey Simon, are you out there? Can you hear us? Can you hear us, Simon? No, that's okay. Simon, Simon, are you out there? Are you on the water? Can you hear us? <laughs> <laughs> Upside down. <laughs> All right. Yeah, Simon, if you're out there, tell us what you're seeing. So we're looking at some uh, some footage from on the water, from our correspondents on the water. Just the uh, sailors hanging out, having a good time, calming down after a uh, tough race, you know. Getting some hydration going, for sure. A lot of them will chat together, see what, talk about what they saw that last race, see... Uh, you know, see if they can figure out what what worked well for some people, what the favorite side was. Um, just try to figure out what the best action for the next race is going to be.
and that breeze seems to be picking up a little bit. It, uh, we feel it here on shore. It's getting a little chilly with a stronger breeze and hopefully those sailors can keep the boat flat. They're gonna be working hard with waves and chop. And yeah. Hi, Jen. How you doing? Pretty great, Brad. How about you? Good. I saw that you uh, you made it out there for the practice race. Yeah, how was it? three of us. It was pretty great. There was like, some big breeze. Uh, definitely overpowered at, at a lot of times. Did you that? No, no, no. Don't worry about <laughs> it. Definitely overpowered at times. It was good to get out there. Definitely got to fix some things with my boat. But I think it was a bunch of the racing community as well for us. I know they're, I talked to uh, PRO and a bunch of other folks, and I know that they're feeling really solid about tomorrow, too. So. Sweet. I think it was good for everyone. I know Lindsay and I were saying it was just the stress relief that we needed after a day of registration and all of the lead up to, you know, doing this whole thing. It was nice to, to get out there and remember why we were doing all of it in the first correct, place. Correct, correct. Yeah, there's a lot of work that was put into this and I know you're a big help. Yeah. So, you <laughs> Jack, so, so we appreciate all the hard work. No problem. So, but it's great. I mean, I know talked to everyone thus far, they're really excited, you know, like, you know, they're all excited to sail against each other. You guys are, you know, 
awesome <laughs> community of helpful sailors. Any advice for, the, especially because you're a local here, oh, tell yes, us a little about, about the sailing uh, area. Oh, the local knowledge. <laughs> Which someone needs to tell me about the local knowledge. I'm out here more on other kind of boats than my sunfish. Near the water temperature 65 degrees. <laughs> That's what's nice. And I'm the from Delaware. Really warm. I think the, uh, the tides and currents are definitely a thing that sailors who are not used yeah. to oceans and not from around here should. Uh, look into it tends to be like a big toilet bowl out here, especially when it gets nice and light. So um, that's, I don't know how to do that right, but someone here sure does. There are plenty of folks to talk to about it. That will come into play tomorrow. Yeah, so. definitely. I think it's supposed to be a good bit lighter tomorrow. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. And um, yeah, no, 